Hi Hermits, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to be tier ranking every single one of the books I read in 2021. And let me just tell you, I'm in the kind of mood to be brutal, to be honest, to be completely transparent about each of these books. I've had some amazing reading experiences in 2021, and I've also had some really bad ones. So I'm going to go ahead, start sharing my screen, and I'll talk you through everything on my list. Okay, so let's start by looking at my different tiers. So right at the top, obviously, we have Iconic. So this is an all-time favourite, something that I will reread again and again, something that I just completely adored and cannot fault in any way. Next, we have I Love This Book But Hate Myself. So these are the ones that I really thoroughly enjoyed, but I'm somewhat ashamed of myself for loving. Um, then we have A Pretty Fab Time. So these are the really amazing books that I read that haven't quite made it to that like god tier. So something that I would recommend widely, something that I really enjoy, but it's just not quite a uh, 10 out of 10. Then we have Good But Forgettable. So these, again, they're things that I enjoyed reading, but they're not going to stay in my mind, in my heart for the rest of my life. They're just not going to be that memorable. Some of them I might have kind of forgotten about already. And some are things that I just think that I will probably forget about at some point. Um, but they were still enjoyable. Then we have Not For Me. So things that I just really don't think were the right fit for me, but objectively can see that they would be good for other people. And then Literal Trash, the books that I hated. The ones that I would burn if I was a book burner. Okay, so now you are familiar with the ranks. Let's get to this. So I'm going to do this in order of books read. So we're starting with the book that I started and finished on January 1st, 2021, which was The Confession. <laughs> I forgot for a second, The Confession by Jesse Burton. And I feel like that needs to go into pretty fab time because I literally sat and read this all in one sitting. I had my like tea and snacks brought to me as I was reading. But I didn't, I didn't stop, I didn't get up, I didn't do anything to interrupt the reading flow, which always is a sign of supreme enjoyment. Now, I will say that it wasn't necessarily my favourite story in terms of how it panned out, but it was a really good time. The characters were really well developed and um, it had a conclusion that just tied everything up while leaving some things open. And I like that sounds like an oxymoron like it can't be both things at once but it was so I was really pleased with that um the seven spiritual laws of success I don't want to say it's trash I'm gonna say it's not for me because this felt very basic so I have quite an in-depth understanding of spirituality it's something that I read a lot about it's something that I've experienced a lot of and I thought this book was going to be a lot deeper than it was. It felt very surface level. So I think it would be a great option for beginners, but it just wasn't for me. Um, recipe for a perfect wife. Um, oh, where do I want to put this? So I, I feel like it's going to have to be in a pretty fab time because I laughed at la out loud so much while reading this book. Um, and I think it was, so just to give you a little bit of context, it tells two parallel stories about two women who lived in the same house. One is modern day, one is in the 1950s. And at the beginning of each chapter, it has like a little quote or a little extract from, you know, like a traditional housewife how-to guide, usually written by men. And honestly, the quotes that the author chose, like I was snorting while I was reading them. It was so funny. And the story was really enjoyable, really satisfying too. So I think I'm going to leave that at pretty bad time. The Peach Keeper, literal trash. And I was really disappointed because previously I've really enjoyed any book by Sarah Addison Allen, but Honestly, no. So lazy. Sorry if you can hear my dog pitter-pattering in the background. 
the home edit life is also going in literal trash. Here is a bugbear of mine. If you give me a book and tell me it's nonfiction, when it, what it actually is, is a collection of somebody's Instagram posts, I am going to be pissed off. That is a waste of my time. If I wanted to read your Instagram posts, I would follow you on Instagram. Why, why are we calling that a book? No. And it's, it's, it's something that I've seen a lot of people do, but honestly, not okay. Um, next, we have The Duke and I, which is the first of the Bridgeton books. Obviously, that is going in literal, literal trash. Um, I did have a reasonable amount of enjoyment reading both this book and the second book, which comes later in the year. But honestly, when I try and think of its qualities, I, I don't necessarily have anything positive to say. I really enjoyed the TV show, but the books are just trash, trash, trash. Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So I didn't hate it when I read it, but I feel like that needs to go in trash too because there were just some things that happened in there that were so not believable that it ruined my overall perception of the book. That there were just things that I'm like, no, make it make sense. And while there were some sections and some concepts that I enjoyed overall, I'm just going to say trash. Lonely Fajita. I'm going to say good but forgettable because I, I might have already forgotten. <laughs> so if I have this right, I think this is about a very Bridget Jones-esque kind of character who ends up moving in with this elderly woman. And I do love any book that features the elderly. Like it's always a fun time. And I did enjoy reading this, but it just wasn't it wasn't stellar. It doesn't stand out in my memory. Asking for a friend, trash. Well-read black girl. Oh, this is tricky. This is tricky because it, it, it felt, it's sort of a collection of essays that center around different representations of black women in literature throughout history. And I always love reading things like that. It's enjoyable, it's informative, it's educational. It's a, and definitely a great reference book. I think I would go back to it and look for um, reading recommendations for myself. But, at the, but also because of the style of book, it's not necessarily like super compelling. It's not like this amazing story that you just can't get enough of. So it's hard to say that it's like iconic or an amazing time. Because honestly, I think if I didn't go back and reread sections of it, I would forget about a lot of what was said. So I'm going to put it in good but forgettable. The Chicken Sisters, that was a fun time. So that was about two warring chicken restaurants in this small town. And yeah, I, I did enjoy that one. But again, I, I'm going to say good but forgettable. The Silk House. The Silk House by Katie Blunt. I am mad at this book. I am mad at this book because it had such potential and this, like, the story was so layered and had so many great ideas, but it was just not executed well. I feel like it was really rushed. I feel like things weren't explored appropriately. I think I feel like things weren't wrapped up Um in a satisfying way, it felt very, very rushed. So I'm going to have to put it in literal trash, even though it's not as trashy as some of the things that are already on there, just the level of satisfaction and enjoyment that it left me with, it belongs there. Um, the, okay, The Viscount Who Loved Me, the second in the Bridgerton series, it has to go in trash. I will say that I enjoyed that one more than the first one, significantly more, but again, it's trash. We know it's trash. Next, we have The Prince and the Troll by Rainbow Rowell. Um, I'm gonna say good, but forgettable. It's a novella, it's a retelling of, um, I think is it The Three Billy Goats Gruff with the troll under the bridge. Um, yeah, it was a it was good, but it again, it's not something that is going to last in my memory long term. 
And um, Hazel and Gray is an, another in these fairy tale retellings. And this one is obviously a retelling of Hansel and Gretel. I feel like I wanna, mm, I did, I did enjoy that one quite a lot more than The Prince and the Troll. But would I would I put it in Pretty Fab Time? I don't know. I think if this was a longer, if it was a novel, I would have been all about this. I actually really enjoyed the story and the characters and the concept. But it's hard to get super invested when it's something that is really, really short. So I think I'm going to have to put it in Good But Forgettable. Okay, now we're getting into a bit of a non-fiction moment. So we have The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. Um, for the same reason as putting Well Read Black Girl in there, I'm going to put it in Good But Forgettable. Now The Artist's Way is a very good book. It contains a lot of really worthy exercises and help and support and some really great things to just grow your connection with your creativity and unleash a different level of creative thinking in your life. But because it's something that without a reread, I'd probably forget the bulk of it. I'm gonna put it in good, but forgettable. It's definitely something that I would refer back to and read sections of again and again. I would probably work through it again because it is set up like a six week course. Um, but I, I feel like that's the most appropriate place to put it. The same with Spirit Means Business, which is another personal development book aimed at business owners. It was enjoyable. I took some great notes, but again, if I didn't read it again, I would probably forget the bulk of the contents. Hammer, Sickle and Broom by Golara Vincent. So this is a memoir and it's actually a memoir of somebody that I know. And I would have to say that it's a pretty fab time. Um, this is the point. So I read Hammer, Sickle and Broom on the 31st of May, 2021. And this is like, that was the catalyst for just getting back into reading again. So everything else I read across like, um, January to April and the only book I read was on the th in May was on the 31st and it was that one and I read it all in one day thoroughly enjoyed it but then it was like it's like something switched in my head after reading that and suddenly I was like no I'm a reader again and you will see like ju I'm gonna like scroll down just so, like this is all of the books that I read in the second half of the year. So you can see that there's a massive difference in volume. And I credit that to Hammer, Sickle and Boom because it was a really fun time. Um, the Alphabet Sisters, I'm gonna put in good, but forgettable because it was good, but it was also forgettable. Didn't love how it ended. I thought that was such an unnecessary strand of the story, but that's a conversation for another day. The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary, it has to go into pretty fab time. That was a real enjoyment. And this is, that was sort of what got me back into my romance era. So you will notice a lot of romances in the second half of the year. And the flat share is responsible for that because previously I'd sort of been off romance. I'd, I mean, you can't really tell from 2021 reading, but in 2020 and 2019, I was reading more historical fiction and more crime fiction and then nonfiction. So it's, it was kind of new bringing the romance back again. Evidence of the Affair by like Taylor Jenkins Reid. I feel like I have to put that in iconic because it is a novella, it is super short. So I shouldn't have found it as impeccable as I did, but honestly, it was perfection. I just felt like every word was so carefully selected. The vibes were strong. It was, really enjoyable and I'm really thankful that I read that and the reason I did is because I was behind on my reading target for 2021 so I was trying to read some short books this was a novella that was on Amazon and so I thought okay I'll give it a go if Forever Interrupted had been the only Taylor Jenkins read book that I'd read I wouldn't have even bothered 
trying Evelyn Hugo or Daisy Jones and honestly like they were some of my favorite reading moments from 2021 so I'm really grateful to this novella for helping me see that Taylor Jenkins Reid has some stunners in her repertoire too. Um, Get Alive Chloe Brown. Mm, this is tricky. This is tricky, tricky, tricky. So I enjoyed, I enjoyed this book, but I do also think that the series is a little bit overhyped. Like they're good, but they're not, they're not like leagues beyond all of the other romances that exist. But so it's a difficult one. When, so I'm not sure if they want to be in Good But Forgettable or Pretty Fab Time. Mm. I'm going to put it in Pretty Fab Time for now, just because I have a hilarious memory attached to this book. So I didn't necessarily know what to expect going in. So I was listening to the audiobook without headphones while doing my garden. So I took a week off in June for my birthday. And during that time, it was really sunny. So I thought I'm gonna dig my garden out. I'm gonna plant some new stuff. It's gonna be great. And so I put that audio book on just on the loudspeaker while I was in my garden. And <laughs> um, just for some context, I have elderly neighbors, elderly male neighbors on both sides of my house. They're both single, they live alone they're old men like in their 70s and 80s and so I was listening to this book with the volume up and when I tell you the smut in this book comes out of nowhere like I was not expecting it it's like everyone's going about their day and then suddenly boom like sexy times are there and abundant and so I was there like just sort of listening to my smut doing my gardening and then like maybe half an hour later, I turn around and realize that on both sides of my house, my elderly neighbors were sat there in the garden, just enjoying the ride too. So that was fun. They haven't made eye contact with me since. And that was in June. Um, Beach read, I'm going to say pretty fab time. Cause again, I read that all in one sitting, maybe two sittings. My not so perfect life, literal trash. Diary of a Drag Queen. Um, I'm gonna say Pretty Fab Time. If I had one in between these two tiers, I would probably put it in there. Um, but I can't put it in Good But Forgettable because I will not forget this book. <laughs> I will not forget Diary of a Drag Queen because it is pure filth. Like filthy, it's the filthiest thing that I've ever read. But it was a fun time, so. I've got a stick in there and it, it is a memoir if you haven't heard of this so it's a memoir by Crystal Rasmussen um the author is a non-binary drag queen and it's a really fascinating chronology of their journey just discovering who they are and then like really entering the world of entering the world of drag and the experiences and like finding love when also challenged by obviously all of these um, external prejudices and it's just it's a fun time but but wear your headphones if you're listening to it I listened to it as an audiobook my headphones were the key to success there next we have The Switch by Beth O'Leary that has to go in pretty fab time too so I listened again I listened to the audiobook of this and I just thought it was stunning in audio format. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Dudley Summer. I'm gonna have to put this in, I love this book, but I hate myself because it should probably be in trash, but it was really enjoyable. So it tells the story of this um, kind of washed up actress. So she was a former teen star who then became unemployable, was attached to some scandal, and she just can't get the work anymore but she had debts that she needs to pay off so she ends up saying yes to this reality tv show where she is going to 
and get her PI license and solve crimes in her hometown that she hasn't been to since she left to become a star because she's got a shitload of family drama back there. And um, you, know, you can tell, like anything that centers around reality TV is probably going to be a bit crap. But honestly, it was so much fun. You and me on vacation. Mm. I'm torn. I'm torn here. So I, I'm torn between Pretty Fab Time and Iconic because I really enjoyed this one. I definitely preferred it to Beach Read. Um, I mean, Beach Read was fine. It, it was good. I had a good time. But You and Me on Vacation, there was just, there was something, there was something else. There was just this little flicker of magic that, I don't know, it felt really relatable for me, like really relatable. Um, and I think that that's what set it apart. And I also loved that the couple was fairly normal. So in most romances, you will notice that one or both of the characters, they are exceptional in some way. They have amazing talents and gifts and um, they're the most beautiful people in the world or they're the most talented or they're like the most something. Whereas Poppy and Alex felt like two fairly normal people. And I've heard um, a lot of reviews talk about them being quite boring, but I actually liked that. I liked that they were just regular humans that you can imagine yourself knowing and meeting in real life. Um, and them having this epic love story, as they do, because it gives you hope. It gives you hope that as a normal, boring person, you can also have the stunning love. So. Mm. I'm going to stick her in Iconic for now. Seven days in June, easiest decision I've ever made. This is going in Iconic. This is in my top three books of 2021. I bought it because I'm somewhat of a narcissist and my birthday is the 7th of June. So when I saw Seven Days in June, I was like, yes, it's meant for me. Like I cannot even describe the reaction that I had to reading this book. I've never felt this in a conflict between being desperate to get back to it and being terrified of finishing it. And it was this constant push and pull of like, I really want to read this, but I don't want to run out of pages. And I read it on my Kindle and then have bought the hardcover co copy also, which I never do. I never duplicate the books that I have ever. And I very rarely buy hardcovers and I very rarely buy new books, but I enjoyed it so much that I was like, no, I need this on my shelf because I will reread it every year until I die. Like that, that's how I feel about this book. And um, The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. Oh, I'm gonna have to say, I love this book, but hate myself. And this isn't trashy, just to be clear, but it's it's not objectively a great book. However, what it is, is a Jane Eyre retelling. And I am a giant hoe for Jane Eyre retelling. I love them. Jane Eyre is a classic that I adore. I've read it so many times. And whenever I find a retelling, I'm all over it. And this delivered, it gave me what I wanted guests enjoyed it would definitely recommend lock every door by riley sega literal trash the kiss quotient by helen huang iconic the black flamingo by dean atta hmm. pretty bad time or iconic let's go for iconic the Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. Mm. I'm torn between good but forgettable and trash because although I was com I read this during a vlog and I was complimentary at the time, but I think that was just because of the general mood I was in rather than my thoughts on the book. Um, there was a lot that I didn't like about it, but I did, ha I did have an enjoyable time, so I'm going to put it in good but forgettable. 
regretting you I am going so this is my first Colleen Hoover the start of a love affair um but I am going to put her in good but forgettable girls of paper and fire not for me I was seriously underwhelmed by this one the first couple like maybe two or three chapters I was like oh maybe this is some fantasy I'm going to enjoy but honestly I thought it was really superficial and underwhelming so there it sits girl a by abigail dean oh this is tricky because it was a very good book but it was not a pleasurable book like it doesn't deal with a pleasurable story which makes it difficult um i'm definitely not going to forget it so i'm gonna say pretty fab time playing bad heroines iconic honestly I could I could write essays about this book in fact if this had been released while I was still at university this would have been a big chunk of my dissertation hands down I thought it was like this epic work of art the layering the depth the magic included on every single page I like I like it should be framed it should be in a museum it is stunning it's impeccable I will not hear a word against it and year of the witch I'm going to say not for me it was good it and very much like seven spiritual laws of success it just wasn't as in-depth as I was expecting it was all stuff that I already know however if you're new to um, like magic and witchcraft and spirituality I think it'll be a very good beginner's guide um Baltimore Blues by Laura Lipman I'm gonna say good but forgettable because I've forgotten a lot about it but I do remember enjoying my time reading it The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo okay oh I have an issue with this book So I want to say that it's iconic because so much of it was, but there's just this one thing that I can't get over. So I did not like the main love interest. I thought the main love interest was kind of an asshole. So, mm. but then like when we're ranking books, are we ranking them based on how much we like what happened? Or are we ranking them based on objectively how good they are, how they're written, how they're put together? That is the challenge. So I'm, I'm just in between Pretty Fab Time and Iconic because it was a stunning, it was a stunning experience. But like I said, that love interest needed a slap in the face. And I, I felt like the story revolved so much around that love story and not around what I consider to be the truly iconic relationship, which was Evelyn and Harry. Like I thought their friendship was God tier. God tier. I can't let my bitterness win over. It's gonna be iconic. Um, big summer trash. Foul is fair. Mm. Do I want to put that in Pretty Fab Time or Iconic? So Foul is Fair is a Macbeth retelling and it is so well done, it, but it's because it's like, it's been given a twist. So it's like this revenge, high school revenge plot. Um, and I thought it was brilliant. I really did. But is it an all time favorite? I think I'm going to say pretty about time. The Great Garden. So yeah, this, like, it's weird. This book made me very nostalgic. It reminded me of the things that I loved to read when I was in my early 20s, when I was having my deep melancholic moments. So when I was loving like the Belle Jar and Bonjour Tristesse and um, anything that was just a little bit depressing. <laughs> um or a little bit bittersweet and so it just gave me those vibes of like old baby Dara 
would I say that it is like a new all-time favorite probably not but I did thoroughly enjoy my time reading it because it did just give me the vibes so I'm gonna say pretty fab time Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. I really loved Heartbones. I thought that was a really good one and one that I would definitely reread. Um, I'm going to say Pretty Fab Time for that too. Okay, now we are moving on to Verity. Good but forgettable. The Deal by L. Kennedy. This is going straight up to, I love this book, but I hate myself. Let me just scroll up. That's exactly where she belongs. I mean, you just know that anything with abs on the front cover belongs in that category. Okay, The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. Good but forgettable. And The Harpy by... I can't remember the author. Is it not for me or is it literal trash? Probably both. I'm going to call it trash. All roads lead here. This book. My first Mariana Zapata, the start of an era. I adored this. I thought it was stunning. I have maybe one complaint, which is the third act conflict was just stupid. It was just unnecessary. If you just like deleted those couple of pages out of the book, it would have been like an impeccable, wouldn't change a thing, iconic read. But because there was just that element that I thought was so unnecessary, I'm conflicted about whether it goes in iconic or pretty fab time. Hmm. So I think because it did spark a love for a new author, I am going to put it in iconic. Okay, Arsenic and Adobo. I was really underwhelmed by that book. I'm going to put it in not for me. I had high expectations because I love a mystery and I love anything that centers around food and this has both of those, but no, it just didn't work for me. The Best Thing by Mariana Zapata. This, this was not the way to follow all roads lead here because this was kind of trash. Um, a couple of crimes were committed in the writing of this book. One was treating your reader like they're stupid. Like that, that's just not something I appreciate. And that was very much the vibe I got from the first couple of chapters. And then there were elements to the story that I'm just like, who is believing this? Who is believing that this happened? Like make it make sense. So, mm. but then I did enjoy some of the relationships and some of the storylines. And I did read the thing in like a day so like how bad can it have been so I like I don't know I want to put it in trash just because I was so disappointed but it's not actual trash like when I look at the things that were that are in the trash level that I really quite disliked mm. where do I put her I'm going to say not for me. That feels like the most generous place to put this one. Okay, Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. Let's just go straight up to where she belongs in. I love this book, but hate myself. This is like if somebody tried to make a plot around a porno, to be quite honest. And that's not to say that it's just full of sex, sex, sex. It's not. But there were just some scenes and I'm like, which horny teenage boy wrote this? Because who, who, who legitimately has an argument with someone and as a response to that argument just decides, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna jump in the pool with all of my clothes in. So all of my clothes go see-through 
and you can see my nipples like that's just that that's not how females work I, I'm pretty sure anyway um just breaking around I cannot remember that book I think it's a novella I don't remember hating it mm. I'm going to say good but forgettable because clearly it's quite forgettable. Ooh, baby doll. That is pretty fab time. So good. So good. So good. So good. I would definitely reread that. The Flower Girls. Mm, that is a thriller. Is it not for me or is it literal trash? I'm going to say it's not for me. Bad girls, literal trash. A Court of Thorns and Roses, my first Sarah J Mass. And let's just say, spoiler alert, it did inspire me to go out and buy the rest of the series. I love this book, but I hate myself. Like, it's obviously written for teenagers. It's obviously a bit silly. But do I care? No. No, enjoyed it. The Bride Test, loved that. She is going to go in, mm, has to be iconic. I read it in all one night, literally went to bed, opened it, didn't go to sleep until I'd finished. Wealth Warrior, good but forgettable, like some of the other non-fiction, like it was a a decent read. I made notes. I made annotations. Am I going to remember anything that I learned from that book? No, but I would probably refer back to it. Um, from Luke Love with Love. I'm just going to tell you right now that this one is a god tier romance. Luke Love may marry me if he chooses to. If he chooses to, I would say yes. But just. Honestly, like if you've read it and I say the thing with the pig, that like you know, you know, I just, oh, what a god. Um, one with heaven, it's a poetry collection, literal trash. Didn't enjoy that. Um, the Holiday by T.M. Logan. I'm going to say good, but forgettable. It's just your very standard, crimey, slight, slightly thrilling, like domestic drama. Um, not memorable, but I enjoyed the experience. Dear Aaron, this is another Mariana Zapata that underwhelmed me. And I was really bummed about this because it's actually a companion to From the Cough of Love, which as you've seen is ultimate got tier. So this tells the story of um, one of Jasmine, who is Lukov's love interest, one of Jasmine's sisters and her like love story. And I just, but it didn't have the magic. It didn't have the magic. I didn't hate it. So I, again, I read it in a day. So how bad could it be? But it just didn't hit that same spot. So in an act of senseless generosity, again, I'm gonna just put it in not for me. Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas, like has to go up to it with its little friend birthday girl in I love this book but hate myself it was a fun time again read it in one sitting every character is walking trash but I don't care um that girl by Kate Kerrigan I'm gonna say good but forgettable charming falls apart um the old hmm so I did have a fab time reading that. I actually, and something that set it apart for me was that the main character, so at the start of the book, it's not a spoiler because it happens on the very first page, but our main character is dumped by her fiance. And what I loved about it is that it wasn't your standard romance where, oh, she realized she didn't love him anyway. And then she fell in love with someone else. No, like she actually, she went through it. And she read a lot of self-help and learned a lot in the process. And I love self-help. So I really appreciate it when 
a fictional character also does. Um, and then at the end, when she sort of reconnected with him, she she told him how it is. Like she didn't just forgive him because that would be neater and um, she never really loved him anyway. No, she was like, no, you were a dick. Like this shouldn't have happened. And I did really like that. Um, but at the same time, is it super memorable? I mean, I can't remember the name of the characters, which is probably an indication that it should go in good but forgettable. Mm. Okay. So then we have, I'm going to do all of the tea dragon books together. So I'm going to say that all three belong in a pretty fab time. I don't know if I'm getting those in the right order, but we have the tea dragon society, the tea dragon tapestry and the tea dragon festival, lovely graphic novels, just a delight. They're by Kay O'Neill. I'll definitely be reading additional graphic novels by them because yeah, really enjoyed. Artwork was stunning. Love the inclusivity, love the story, love the little kingdom, love the dragons. It's all just lovely. White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi. So I have thoughts about this book. I actually quite strongly hated the story and hated the characters. However, the writing was magnificent. The writing was magnificent. And I will honestly read any of her books that come across my path. But I strongly just disliked this story. So I'm gonna say that this is not for me. Um, emotion, that that's trash. Like it's this weird collection of um, like some information and some poetry and some affirmations. Like it was so incoherent, like why is that a book? Take a hint, Danny Brown um, has to go alongside Chloe Brown because I have a very similar feeling about that. I mean, I didn't scare the neighbours with this one, but it was a similar level of enjoyment. Um, the Six by Luca Veste. I had a really good time reading that one. Um, mm, is it forgettable? I actually don't think it's that forgettable, so I'm gonna put it in pretty fab time. A Little Love Song by Michelle Magorian. That is one of my childhood faves, so it's going in pretty fab time. I think it was possibly my only reread of the year. The Final Girl Support Group. The first 25% was dull and not very compelling at all, but I had a really fun time later on, so I'm going to say good but forgettable. Kim Reaper. Another little graphic novel. Again, I'm going to say good, but forgettable. I did enjoy it. It was a fun time, but it's not going to stick in my mind the same way that the Tea Dragon Society is. The Dating Playbook by Farah Rashan. Really enjoyed that romance. It was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. There were some like comments that made me think, like, stop letting diet culture rule your life. And for that reason, I feel like I need to knock some points off but the romance was stunning. So I'm gonna say good, for, good but forgettable. Luna and the Lie by Mariana Zapata. Um, we're gonna go in Not For Me. Again, disappointing after those two like iconic Marina Zapata books. Daisy Jones and the Six, literally stunning. Like I don't have a bad word to say about Daisy Jones and the Six. Iconic, iconic. Love in Colour by Bolu Babalola. Mm. I'm gonna say a pretty fab time for that one. Mm, am I always that iconic? Like it is very, very good. I 
do just generally struggle with short stories like they don't give me that same level of connection that a full-length novel does so I might change my mind on that because it it is genuinely a stunning book mm. do I want to move it do I want to move? I'm gonna think about that one I'll leave it there for now the Spanish love deception like why is it so hyped like it it's fine it's a romance it's going in good but forgettable Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. This is God tier Colleen Hoover. I've read how many? Four, five Colleen Hoover books in 2021. This is the one. This is the one I've been waiting for. The one that made me feel feelings. Iconic. The Christmas Murder Game. That was a fun time. It was a fun time. However, it really reminded me in a lot of ways of the death of Mrs. Westaway. And like, I don't really know, like there were some concepts that were similar, but the main like plot was very, very different. But I couldn't get the death of Mrs. Westaway out of my head. And I think because of that, I, yeah, I... I kind of figured out what was going on. So mm, it was good that like, it was really, en- I did really enjoy it. I did really enjoy it. And I think if I didn't have like that other book in my head while I was reading it, I would have enjoyed it more. But then that's not this book's fault. So I'm okay, let's be kind. I'm going to put this in a pretty fab time. one day in December. I want this to be a film. I want this to be one of those like standard Christmas rom-coms that you just watch every year. It's like Love Actually, it's like the holiday, it's just that kind of energy. Um, I did really enjoy it. I did. So we're going to go in pretty good time. The Sun Always Knows Where to Find Me. This was a poetry collection. And this is iconic, my friends. I loved this one. Absolutely loved it. Loved it. My favourite poetry collection of the year. I read four or five, and this one was the one that just honestly surpassed everything else. And then last but not least, Under Her Skin, which is another poetry collection. This time it's by a bunch of different authors, whereas the other one was by one author or one poet. Um, This one was not for me. This was not for me. It was, like the only word I can think of to describe it is grimy. It's described as horror poetry. And I didn't read that disclaimer before reading the book. And it was just very much about um like gross like bodily things and like difficult situations for women like definitely check out the trigger warnings and it just like it wasn't giving me the poetic magic that I was looking for in the moment so we'll say not for me so all in all I think I had a pretty good reading year like there were relatively few books in these lower tiers which is nice to see um yeah I'm really pleased with how this year went from a reading perspective there's lots in the iconic tier lots in the pretty fab time and even the good but forgettable tier I'm really pleased with those and yeah guilty pleasures are always a joy um what I will say is that I think one of the things that made it break down like this so I've got more in those top tiers is that I gave myself permission to just abandon things that I wasn't feeling a lot of the like lower tiered books happened in the first chunk of the year before I really gave myself permission to just abandon things that weren't it so that's something I'm definitely going to be taking into 2022 with me because like who has time to read bad books not me not me. I want the joy of reading. 